Well, here we are once again with Perspectives with Austin Da Silva, as always recorded at WCCA TV, channel 194, right here in downtown Worcester. And we are speaking with uh, Lindsay Conrad Alfieri, and she has a story to tell us. She has a story about how she was searching when she was younger, as many of us are, and how she came to have the views that she holds today, to follow the religion that she follows today, and how she has written a book about it as well. So thank you so much for, for coming. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Let's get started. Um, thank you all for coming. I'd like to thank you, too. And I know you've come on our radio show before. Mm -hmm. um, but now you've written a book about that conversation. Yes. So wanted to revisit that conversation. And mm -hmm. you've grown up in Massachusetts. So let's start off there. Um, what your experience was like. And just start describing what your life and why you started searching. Sure. Um, well, I was pretty typical American growing up um, on the South Shore, and um, I was captain of the volleyball team, captain of the basketball team, prom queen. <laughs> um, I was the one doing everyone's hair and makeup, and probably wouldn't be the type that you would have expected to become a practicant Muslim. <laughs> and so um, I think a lot of people had that question in the back of their heads, and they saw me, you know, 10 years later, 15, I guess it's maybe 20 years <laughs> since I graduated from high school. Um, so I, so many people have asked me, how did you go from that to that? And so I, I thought, you know, maybe someday I'd like to write a book about it. Maybe it'll help someone else that's not so much on their search for Islam, but maybe just wanting to be true to themselves. And so, um, the last few months, my a random story. My my daughter suffers from eczema on her arms, and we I searched for like two years trying to find a doctor to to help her, and no one could give me any answers. And I finally found a neurosurgeon down in Louisiana, and he was amazing. And he basically said she needs more sun. <laughs> Where you live is just not sufficient. So we tried his advice and went down to Mexico, and her skin cleared up. <laughs> so we realized that next winter, we're going to have to be living like we're retired in our 30s. <laughs> so I said, maybe I'll write that book. Who knows? <laughs> maybe create a stream of income. Who knows? So basically being inspired by my daughter, I, I decided to write the book earlier than I ever thought I would. Huh. When you were in, in high school mm -hmm. and you're the captain of the basketball team and the prom queen, yeah. at that time, were you feeling fulfilled or were you feeling, even at that time, that, boy, there's something more and I'm going to begin searching? And, and not maybe even, I mean, you came to, to Islam, but mm -hmm. that maybe isn't even what you, you knew you were searching for at the time. Right. No, I was always interested in um, the Amish lifestyle. Um, I always wanted to... Actually, the day of my confirmation at the church, when I was like 16, I told my mom that my goal in life was to get closer to God. But I didn't really know how to do that because I wasn't able to find the answers that I was like searching for um, within my religion. And that, of course, is a personal thing. Um, but I needed verifiable evidence. I couldn't just go on a mystery of faith or... Um, blind faith. I am very like, I'm a truth seeker and I, I need to see concrete evidence. So you were searching for God yeah. and concrete evidence that God exists in our, in our world. Mm -hmm. Why, why the, the interest in the, in the Amish? Because there was something more simplistic about it? Well, I liked the way that they incorporated God into their whole um, life, like their whole lifestyle, where I saw um, the people around me, whether family or friends, or the majority of people around me, it was more compartmentalized. It was like sat Sunday morning church. or right. So I wanted to see if their lifestyle was more fulfilling than sort of a, um, a mainstream. Did your friends know that sort of all this was going on in your, no. in your mind? So, <laughs> so, so talk about compartmentalizing. Yeah. And so this is my this is my life, but at the yeah. same time you're having these these feelings, but at the same time being the right. prom queen and the, the 
<laughs> the head of the volleyball team and everything else. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I used to ask the questions when I was real young, like before my brain could process those things. And my dad would say, don't think about it. <laughs> Just go to sleep. And I'd be like, but, but how did this happen? How did that happen? So it's always been in me. I just just wanted to start. I, I would just couldn't fathom that we are here for no reason. Mm. And so, so you started off with searching Amish. Well, um, I was probably too young to actually search. I was just interested in it. Um, and I like the simplicity of their lifestyle, the modesty. And, um, but it wasn't probably until um, my mid-20s that I started searching. And I sort of started it through natural medicine, actually, because I, I was examining nature and seeing that there were so many cures in nature. And there was like so much unbelievable wisdom that just at our fingertips. And I started to study. I enrolled in a doctor of natural health program. And um, it in, actually introduced me to other healing modalities around the world. And I became really interested in um, traditional Indian medicine from India, Ayurveda. So I, after I finished the doctor of natural health program, I went down to New Mexico to go to the Ayurvedic Institute. And um, there, it sort of introduced us to Hinduism, Buddhism. Um, when I was in that class, there were a, a couple people from Turkey. And they said, you know, we see that you're on a search for different, you know, spiritual paths. And you should read this book. It was The Five Pillars of Islam. So um, I took that book. And I had just found a dog, a six-week-old dog on the highway in the middle of the desert. So I scooped her up and tried to take care of her. And no one wanted to take her. And I couldn't think about giving her away to someone and have her go and be abused somewhere. So. I kept her and went to the dog park with this book in my hand, The Five Pillars of Islam, ironically, <laughs> um, and sat down on the bench while she played. And this kid walked up to me. And he was blonde hair, blue eyes. And he said, if you like that book, I have another one that you should read. And I looked up and I was like, OK. <laughs> and he had like, it almost had like a Bostonian accent. And I was like, number one, it kind of sounds like you're from Boston. And he's like, I'm from Burlington, Mass. And I was like, ah. And he goes, and, he goes, and number two, I'm a convert to Islam. And um, I'd love to introduce you to my wife. She's actually Indian, well, Pakistani. And she's from Providence. So they ended up taking me to the local mosque and introducing me to Islam. And it just sort of. Yes. I just have to say, I think you have a, a tendency to make friends with people from Providence and Boston, because yeah. we're, we're also friends yeah. too. Well, yeah, was, right. Is this is this part of the the concrete proof, though, or that you were looking for that what would seem to be these random events? I find a dog by the side of the road. The dog leads me to be in this dog park. Yeah. Being in the dog park leads this person to be able to see me. Somebody else has given me a book, which leads yeah. this individual to right. come and speak to me, which then. You know, everything right. leading uh, yeah, another it, step. As I was going through it, I was thinking, I always sort of felt like that, um, that these just signs. And I, I don't know, maybe I was looking into it more than it was. But mm. looking back, it mm. kind of seemed very consequential. <laughs> you know, it was just like, well, even as, I mean, <laughs> even as you're, as you're saying, I mean, any one of those things doesn't happen. Maybe you still come to the same conclusions. But it does seem as if, I mean, it is sort of, let me give you this book. I'm going to start looking at this book while I'm in the dog park. Yeah. Oh, random guy who you know happens to be right. in the in the dog park right. at the same time notices right. and decides that he's going to say anywhere along the line. Mm -hmm. The book doesn't get given. He's not there at that particular time. He sees that you're reading it, but he decides, ah, hey, you know what? I I don't want to go over and say something. Mm -hmm. Anything along the line could have changed right. the path. Right. And I, I really exposed myself to a lot of different um, cultures and religions. And I was at ashrams in the middle of like the desert with the Sikhs. And I really exposed myself because I wanted to study everything to, to be able to say, OK, I don't believe it all. Or I know that I studied everything, so I know that this one's right for me. But um, I probably could have taken a lot of different paths. And I did try a lot of different yeah. paths, because I had to experience them. I'm just that type. Um, so I just felt drawn to this path. But you know, 
Yeah, well, you know, but being drawn to the path, I mean, everybody's always pretty sure, and a lot of it, I suppose, comes from our parents, right? What, whatever your religion is, that's the right one, I, you know, right? right? right. right. Uh, you, having studied so many, is there, is there a commonality? Is there something that ties them all together? Did you see something in, in each of them where people are always fighting over these differences, but yeah. you see something that is, oh, is the same? Oh, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Um, I, I personally sort of feel like there was one root, and over the years it's sort of gotten, it's like branches, yeah. you know, all from the same trunk. Um, and I wanted to find the original trunk. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and that's what I ended up finding in Islam. Wow. It was just the simplistic, you know, be in submission to God, whether you want to call it Islam or submission to God or something else in another language. And is all of this in the book? Is the book more sort of the straightforward story of, you know, uh, what you told us with, uh, with the dog and, and with the five pillars of Islam, or is it that plus your thoughts on religion? Um, I didn't put that many, um, like I didn't want to sound preachy in the book. I just wanted it to be a book about um, being true to yourself, whatever that may be. Um, so I just really talked about my life and um, the difficulties that I encountered and um, how I felt through um, the difficulties and through the good times and um, how it how um, reflecting on hijab, reflecting on being a housewife after having degrees and careers, and um, but it's really my opinions. It's not saying this is right and this is wrong, and because I can't do that, you know. And everyone's path is different and shouldn't be judged, you know. So it's um, it's not very preachy. <laughs> you touched on the fact that your friends were very astonished at your choices after yeah. 15, 20 years after high school. Yeah. What was their reaction? Um, I think after high school, uh, I, you kind of take your own path after high school. You're kind of stuck with a group that you might not have necessarily chosen. <laughs> um, according to like interests and but you're put there and um what's normal is maybe not what's normal after you get out so i kind of it's kind of like a little bit of a ghetto <laughs> um so i had already sort of started taking a different path so i didn't keep in touch with very many people from high school not because i didn't get along with them just really because of interest um but um, the few people that I did, the close friends from childhood that I did keep in touch with, they didn't really take it very well. Um, and it might have been that my path led me to make decisions that were pretty abrupt. Like I went from within like three months, like a flip flop where people didn't know what had been in my head for the last 28 years, you know. Um, and so it, it seemed abrupt, but to me it wasn't. Like I could see their point of view, and so I was embarrassed a little bit because I could empathize with them looking at me, but at the same time I had to do what I felt was right in my gut. And so I put on the hijab. I had met my husband like in August, September, and we got married in January. And he was on the other side of the world in Italy. So <laughs> um, people were like, what is she doing? Like, and why is she wearing that thing on her head? And, but they didn't know that I had been, like, just chomping at the bit to wear it, not because of some guy, just because he was actually another convert who said, don't be scared. You can do it. You know, I did it six years before you. Do it. And that's all he had to say. And I was like, Put it on. Did they did they think you had been brainwashed? What were some of the, the, the comments? Well, luckily, because I had converted by myself without like any man or influence, um, no one could say that to me, which mm. is actually really nice. Mm. It's it's a it's a argument that I never had to get into with anyone. Um, 
because people know me and I'm probably the last person who would be able to be manipulated because <laughs> I'm very, I'm, I'm tough. I'm sweet, but I'm tough. Well, Bostonian. Some of, this, <laughs> some, some of this goes back That's too, a slow though, to, slogan, right? Sweet, yeah. but tough Bostonian. That's right. <laughs> just something though, that, that you talk about all the, all the time. I mean, this is, this is America and there may be some ebbs and flows, but there are times when wearing the hijab, when being Muslim can really put a target on on a on a person, unfortunately, mm -hmm. uh, because of events that that it happened. Yeah. When you converted, what was going on in the world at that time? Um, well, I mean, was there what was it a? And I guess what I'm getting at was was it a particularly difficult time where people would say, "Oh my goodness." Uh, well, it was 2011, mm. so um, it was. I put the hijab on, and then three months later, I moved to Italy, where in a place where no one knew me before. Mm -hmm. I maybe had a couple of friends that were probably thinking, "Oh boy," <laughs> but um, for the most part, all the people that I was meeting didn't know me otherwise. So um, it's actually one of the things that I recommend if someone is maybe a convert or wants to put the hijab on as an adult. It's nice to be in a place where it's sort of a neutral ground and you don't feel like you have to explain yourself or be embarrassed. Um, and I was, I lived in Italy for three years, so I was able to be confident and take those three years to build my confidence and my new lifestyle and my new look. <laughs> um, and then when I came back home, I had the confidence to approach those conversations with people who hadn't seen me in a while so but as far as problems in in the community of the system, I really I have to say I really haven't had any problems and I don't know if it fits the way I hold myself or um, I, don't, I, I don't know yeah. I'm not really sure but I really haven't had any problems people look people are con like I think they're wondering she looks American she looks Irish <laughs> but she's you know so I think they're just confused a little bit and they're curious more than anything, but once they get to know me, they seem happy to know me. <laughs> what's your feedback then uh, when you said I'm writing this book and how I could? What's, really what's positive, yeah, really positive. It's it, I wrote the book in about six weeks, so and I didn't tell anyone that I was doing it. So um, uh, I, it hasn't. Not many people have known. It's just when I put it up on Facebook that coming soon. People are like, what? Wow, that's cool. I would like to encourage other people to do that too because I think everyone has a story to tell. You know, you don't have to wear a hijab after 28 years to tell a story. You know, you can touch people's lives in different ways and you never know whose lives you're going to touch. So I think everyone should do it. And now it's really easy with it. Kindle self publishing. So. <laughs> Sounds so yeah, I mean, it really is, and and uh, again, interesting. So you really focus on more on the on the story, and then everybody can draw their own conclusions. Yeah. In some way as well. Yeah. Do you do you find now, or do you feel now that you have found what you're looking for? Is there yeah. an inner peace that you did not have in those oh. first twenty eight years? Yes. <laughs> it was like night and day. It was not that my life was like bad before. I, right. Very positive. I mean, I had a great life thank God you know um, but I had like a void inside me that I couldn't you know you can feed yourself with food and be satisfied but you need to feed your soul too and that can't be fed with food so you have to find that the spiritual you know path that satisfies you in order to feed that that yeah. void and so I just was really confused and I wanted to know, like, I felt like I was wasting time by not knowing where I'm going to go or where I'm not going to go or where I came from, you know, like what my point is yeah. here. Like I kept searching for my purpose in, in books, you know. I, I was convinced that my purpose was going to pop out of like a book in the university library. So I, <laughs> and it just wasn't. So I just kept getting more degrees and more things and and I was like on a treadmill but I wasn't getting anywhere and so when I finally found Islam it was like oh this looks perfect 
this is what I'm looking for, but I couldn't actually find many people who were practicing it the way I found it in the book. And so I think sometimes with converts, they, um, they have high expectations of Muslims. They forget that they're, they're human too. That um, every Muslim that you see um, has their own past, their own family issues, their own you know, difficulties in school or society or everyone's got some issue, you know. And so you're not going to find the perfect Muslim or the perfect Christian or the perfect Jew. It's, it's just not going to happen. And so I think sometimes we, as humans, we make the mistake of judging a religion by the people who, f who try to follow it, you know. Um, and that's a big mistake, but unfortunately, we're, we're human. We do that. You know, we judge the book by its cover. Um, so I forgot where I was going with that. Yeah, no, I mean, <laughs> exactly. And, and part of it is is that what strikes me about that the whole conversation and just people being people, being people and, yep. that, and that we all are with all of our, our human foibles is that as you're on this path and you're finding these different uh, these different religions. When you found Islam, what do you? I mean, like, so what do you think it was that this this is it? Even mm -hmm. even if it was then difficult to find people who were practicing it, maybe the way it was in your head. Because when you say you were on that treadmill, that treadmill is what millions of people strive for. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness! Look at all the degrees. Look at the accomplishments. Mm -hmm. Look at everything that you have done in your life, yeah. from being the prom queen, right? Mm -hmm. People who would kill to be the to, to be the prom queen, and you had so you had all these great trappings of success, mm -hmm. but then we're still searching for yeah. for something. Whereas people think that if they had had your life for the first twenty eight years, they would be supremely happy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I think. Um, what it was that Islam, for me, it felt like it was just the sim the simplification of the other religions that I had studied, and I I had the proof in the Quran because it hadn't been changed. Whereas with the 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 Gospel and the Torah, I couldn't get the original text because it's nowhere to be found. So I saw there was truth in those scriptures, but I also saw that there were things that couldn't be explained or maybe little mistakes. Um, that man had put in. Yeah. And the it wasn't like the gospel was not written by Jesus. It was written by people who knew the disciples that knew Jesus, and so there was this. There's a lot of room for, you know, error, lost things that are lost in translation. And so when I read the Quran, it seemed like it was the continuation of both of the Old Testament and the New Testament, um, but it sort of clarified what things were right and when things were wrong. It's all the same stories, all the same prophets, and um, it just was like, oh. Well, this makes sense, you know, and it hadn't been touched since the Prophet Muhammad, who had been prophesized in those books. Um, but again, some of the the books of the Bible are not accepted by certain sects of Christianity, and so there's just there's a lot of things that you really. I mean, it's like a rabbit hole. You jump down, and it, you really it's like a full time job. <laughs> um, but I liked the fact that the Quran is verifiable, that you can go to the original. And even if we burnt all the Qurans, like God forbid, there's still millions of people who have memorized it. So it's an oral book and it's a written book. So um, I really liked that, to be able to go back to the original text and say, OK, what does it actually say? Um, so that made the difference for me. Wow. Right. So. I guess the question is, what do you see from here after this book? Will you continue? You said you wrote it up to your marriage. Yeah. Um, do you see yourself writing after that? So I, the first couple of years of my marriage before I had kids, I uh, had a lot of time on my hands. And I 
was studying a lot of Quran, and I would write reading comprehension questions for myself to remember. Because you can't just read the Quran. You really need like an accompaniment to explain the context of each verse. And that's how things are taken out of context, <laughs> which you can do with any text in the world. Um, so you need to read it according to what the scholars say was happening during that verse. And so there's just so many layers. It, it, you really could read it a million times and still not get to like scratch the surface. So um, I personally used um, Norman Ali Khan's uh, Bayana TV which I find amazing. He's, mashallah. Yeah, I, I like his style of teaching too. Yeah, really like from just an American point of view and he explains things really clearly. And so I started listening to his lectures and going through the Quran with him, listen to the lectures and then I'd write down reading comprehension questions and I said, gee, I think someone else might be able to use this, you know, because it's helping me. So I started writing, I ended up doing like four or five chapters of the Quran, and there it's like a lot of information. And then I'd copy all of the verbatim, all of the, the like what he said the answers to those questions were. So that's actually going to be the next book that comes out. Mm. Oh, that's okay. been done for like four years. OK. And when can so, we expect that? Yeah, within well, the next few months. Few months, <laughs> OK. <laughs> <laughs> and well, that's so, none yeah. of me. That's none right. of my opinions, none of my thoughts. It's just me relaying the answers from the scholar, the majority of, you know, who are in agreement. And I, the only thing I did was write down the questions that I thought would get to the point of each verse. So We only have a, a moment left. If people want to get your book, how do they do that? So it's going to be available on Amazon. Um, you can visit my website. It's umfatima.com. And um, I'll update that on the different publications. And the full title of the book is? From Prom Queen to Hijabi, My Journey. Uh, wait a minute. From Prom Hold on a Queen. Second. They should be from able to find it from that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They should be able to get it from I don't that. think that anybody, too, not too many people are going to be confused from that. Yeah, right. The, the main title is From Prom Queen to Hijabi, um, My Road to Faith, My Journey to Faith on a Road Less Traveled. Oh, okay. All right. Well, that, no, that does, that does say it all. <laughs> that leaves us about 30 seconds for you to give us your perspective. So this was one of those stories that really is very personal to me because what Lindsay mm -hmm. described today is exactly similar to my path of finding my religion. Um, even though I grew up Muslim, I actually chose to stay Muslim for the very similar reasons, researching all religions and then deciding what works for me. Uh, what I really loved about this story is the fact that she was searching for something to feed her soul and that and saying true to herself. So what Perspectives does is exactly that, giving you all these opinions, variety of topics so that you can choose what works for you and what you see the truth as in many different topics in our lives, such as social activism, political activism, even religion. So I hope you join us again. Uh, join us on Perspectives with Asima Silva.